In this lecture, we'll briefly cover the nebular theory of solar system formation and how recent exoplanet discoveries have forced astronomers to rethink our understanding of this theory. The nebular theory of solar system formation has been the accepted model for decades. It has only been recently that we've been able to obtain observations to test this model. The nebular theory describes how our solar system formed from a cloud of interstellar gas and dust. In this model, planet formation is a natural consequence of processes that accompanied the formation of our sun. If the theory is correct, then the same processes should accompany the births of other stars. The nebular theory clearly predicts the existence of other planetary systems. That's good because this is what we see. Also, the theory says planet formation begins with condensation of solid particles of rock and ice, which then accrete to larger sizes. We therefore expect that a nebula with lots of rock and ice would form planets more easily. And we see this, at least for Jovian planets. Nevertheless, there are observations that are puzzling. For example, we are seeing many exoplanets, like GJ1214b, that are neither terrestrial nor Jovian. GJ1214b could be a rocky planet with a hydrogen-rich atmosphere, a mini-Neptune, or an ocean planet. There are more planets like GJ1214b that are thought to be water worlds. Another issue is the orbits of many exoplanets. The nebular theory predicts Jovian planets should form only in the cold outer regions of star systems. This is not what we see. Astronomers have found many large gaseous planets with close-in elliptical orbits. These planets have triggered a re-examination of the nebular theory. If Jovian planets can form close to the stars, then the nebular theory would need to be updated. Astronomers investigated this puzzle and found evidence to support the idea that exoplanets were indeed born with circular orbits far from their stars as predicted. These planets are thought to have undergone some sort of planetary migration. Another idea is that gravitational interactions with other massive objects force the exoplanets to closer orbits. A suspected cause of planetary migration has to do with waves in the planet-forming disk. Shortly after any star forms, there is a disk of material that surrounds a star. It's from this disk that the planets form. A young hot Jupiter orbiting in this disk can bunch up the material, creating denser areas. These denser areas propagate like waves and exert a gravitational pull on the planet that may cause it to migrate inward. The highly eccentric orbits we have observed in extrasolar planets can also be explained by gravitational encounters. A close gravitational encounter between two massive planets can send one planet out of the star system entirely, while the other is flung inward into an elliptical orbit. Repeated encounters can cause significant migration. Based on our observations of planets around other stars, it's worth asking the question, do we need to modify our theory of solar system formation? If we're right about the role of planetary migration, then the basic tenets of the nebular theory still seem to hold. We expect rocky terrestrial worlds to form in the inner regions of star systems, and hydrogen-rich Jovian planets to form in the outer regions. Migration could then cause the larger planets to spiral inward. Nevertheless, there still are some mysteries. For example, the unexpected planets we found, like the super-Earths and water worlds. If anything, we've shown that the nebular theory was incomplete and in need of a few new features. There seems to be a much wider variety of solar system arrangements than we originally thought. The variety of star systems leads to another question. Given that we have not discovered other solar systems that are quite like ours, does this mean that our solar system is unique? Or does it simply mean that we have not yet acquired enough data to see how common solar systems like ours really are? This question has implications for the search for life in the universe. Are planets like ours that support life like ours common or rare? We'll address this question in greater detail towards the end of the semester. The bottom line is that extrasolar planets are abundant and diverse. That's it for exoplanets. Take care, and I'll talk to you again soon.